we live in interesting times. There's lots going on at the moment. And this is just um, a snapshot of some of the things that are actually in the news. I'm actually not going to necessarily go to all these links, but I just wanted to raise your awareness, as if it's not already raised, about some of the things that are currently going on. Now, in the session after lunch, we are actually going to pick up on some of these issues and present you with some data and some research into what people are actually finding out and what we can maybe do about it. So I'm not actually going to talk about it now, but rather just use this as a signpost for things to think about. In your um, sessions after we have the Teach Meet presentations, we're going to break up into groups and go off to rooms for discussion. And maybe these are some of the things that you'd like to actually talk about. So we do know that there are declining enrolments in the Mathematics 2 unit course for the HSC. And more and more students are choosing to study general mathematics. That is a worry. We do have some data to share with you later on today about what we think is going on. But I'm sure the teachers in the room will also have stories to share about this issue. It is a problem. Associated with that, we know there's a shortage of qualified mathematics teachers. I'm sure, again, some of you here are in schools where you have teachers teaching out of field. Teachers teaching in Year 7 and 8 who are not qualified math teachers. There is a shortage. Whilst we've got a lot of new teachers in this room, uh, it does appear that particularly in some schools in some areas, it is difficult to find teachers. Interestingly, this, one, this little article was in the Daily Telegraph in January. Should mathematics actually be compulsory for the HSC? That might be something that you actually would like to talk about in your discussion groups. I personally don't agree with that. Um, and there's some reasons why I don't agree with it. I don't think that forcing students to do mathematics for the HSC would it actually improve standards at all, which was one of the arguments. And I think Adrian Pickley endorsed that argument. Uh, I would prefer that everyone chooses mathematics <laughs> because they <laughs> want to do mathematics. That would be my preference. <laughs> okay, we've also got some, uh, recently in The Age, Adam Spencer wrote an article about the ATAR and whether the ATAR is a game to secure the highest scores, which that's a quote from some independent school principals. Um, he actually, uh, it's a very interesting article actually, it's well worth the read. I will make sure that this um, PowerPoint, by the way, is available to everybody. So we're actually going to make sure that as much of this information as possible can be shared. More of that later. Um, we've also, uh, earlier in the year, we had a forum here on first year mathematics and whether the students coming to university to do science and engineering related um, courses were actually well prepared in mathematics. We all know that in the university handbook it says that the presumed knowledge is extension one. But we have a fair bit of evidence that in schools, careers advisors and possibly even maths teachers are saying, you don't have to worry about that, you can do a two week bridging course and you'll be fine. Well, we know that in fact that's not sufficient. So there are some issues around the fact that we don't have prerequisites. Very recently, ACARA released a report on the effectiveness of NAPLAN. And guess what the first recommendation was? <laughs> that the score should be released to schools much sooner. I think we've all been saying that for years. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Okay, we know we've got a review of national <coughs> curriculum. It will be very interesting to see what the findings from that are. The PISA results for 2012 came out at the end of last year. And of course, we had the usual, uh, we are falling behind in Australia. What are we going to do about it? And finally, most recently, we have a review of teacher education. By the way, this, this is, I think, the 40th teacher education review since 1970. The 40th review of teacher education. So a lot of money is being spent on reviews, 
Um, personally, um, I'm not convinced that it's as bad as the minister su suggest it might be, but then perhaps I've got a vested interest. <laughs> I might be very biased. <laughs> so there's lots going on. We live, as I've said here, we live in a dynamic space. No one is ever satisfied, it seems, with what we do, and yet we know the research provides sound advice about the way forward in mathematics education. We are often the whipping boy, unfortunately, for um, some of these things that we read in the press, which, which I find very disheartening.